Today's feature is a guy I think has a game that's really misunderstood. If you look at his career, he's been a winner at every level and does not have a weakness you can simply point out from watching him on the floor. A guy that does everything you can ask of a point guard, but at the same time, lacks a few things that you would require from your point guard. One of the smoothest games at any guard position and a killer heart. Has never seen a light too bright for him and has the numbers to back it up. But why isn't the 5'11 guard showcasing in today's league? Here's three reasons why. Ryan Jamar Boatwright, born December 27, 1992. Salute to Cliff De Niro for the request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it! Stunt number one, taking a Porsche across country. The Porsche 911, one of my favorite cars of all time. It has the speed, is low to the ground so it changes direction on a dime, handles like few like it, is fast enough to get you out of a jam, and has the personality of a small car that can definitely run with the big dogs. Anyone see where I'm going? But one thing you may never see me do is take this beauty across the country. Not that it's bad for the car itself because it's actually better on your engine to keep these type of cars up to operating temperatures over a long period of time which allows the engine to burn off a vast majority of contaminants before getting it into the oil. The reason I wouldn't is because it's just not suited or built for the task. Although it's good for the engine, it's not comfortable and ruining any of its parts can be very expensive. Yes, it's fast and looks awesome on the highway. Yes, Ryan is as well. Yes, it handles and is fearless. So is Boatwright. But what I want my point guard to do, his game was never suited for. As a senior in high school, Ryan played at Mr. Basketball levels. He was unstoppable in the lane and in the open floor, just like a 9-11. Having scoring outputs of 63, 55, averaging 31 points per game, but what no one ever talks about is the fact that at his height and position, a much different skill set is required. You see, Ryan was never much of a passer and presented a real mismatch with his size and reach. Opponents could easily shoot over him. Now he was definitely a good defender on ball, but savvy players know how to treat aggressive defenders like him. Ryan's game was so suited for a guy 6'3 or taller. Being a point guard that's really a two guard, a big two guard at that, was just not fit for the cross country marathon that is the NBA. Point guards already don't have a great shelf life, so as a team, to invest in a guy that's not gonna be around that long is a scary investment that could become expensive like the 9-11. Stunt number two, improperly compensated. Or lack of that term. Look, there's clearly a problem with the system of amateur sports and who am I to say who should and shouldn't receive benefits for the skill they've worked on, especially when others are being paid for it and when it's their likeness being sold and used to gain advertisement and enrollment. You can't tell me Duke University didn't benefit having two of the top three NBA draft picks at their school causing other kids to enroll at the university. But that's a very weird maze to go down with so many traps that make that conversation even longer. Boatwright found out just how long going down that maze would take. After committing to Connecticut, Ryan would have to sit out what turned into being nine games for allegedly receiving money. I think this stunted his growth having to join his team later in the season and put a black eye on his name before even completely getting his foot in the door. He would later join his team and was a very important player in his first season, averaging 10 points a game, 4 assists, and 3 rebounds. But had he gotten off to a better start and had more time on the floor to gel with his team, he could have been a lot better. And who knows where his draft stock could have been had he come in and solidified himself as the next in Kemba's shoes and averaged 15 to 18 points a game. Upon Kemba's departure, a lot of people had their eyes on him sliding right into that role, including myself. Instead, another undersized sports car would fill that lane and take off all the way to the finish line. 
Stunt number three, bad starts can leave you behind for the entire race. In his four years at UConn, Ryan would see lots of success and also win a national championship in his junior season. But instead of leading the team there, he would play second fiddle to now NBA player Shabazz Napier. Napier and Ryan combined to create a matchup nightmare on defense and one of the most prolific backcourts outplaying almost every other opponent they faced. But what was soon realized was that Napier was stepping up to the plate and was actually playing his true position of point guard. Ryan was mostly off the ball, utilizing his unstoppable scoring skills. Shabazz became the more attractive point guard in GM's eyes, and Boatwright continued to place doubt in the eyes of scouts that questioned if he could play the point. After this happened too long, you go on to become undrafted, and the clock starts ticking for you, which is exactly what happened to Boatwright. As a senior, without Napier, Boatwright would average 17 points and 3 assists a game, and really not much else. He was a good on-ball defender, but this just wouldn't be enough to convince scouts. He would get summer league opportunities and perform well if you ask me, but it was just too late. Napier went on to be a first round draft pick and Boatwright became a journeyman. D-League, China, all over Europe. I think once you become settled in that lane, the race is pretty much over. Having a bad start because of the suspension and Napier taking off before him made it an uphill battle, which he's yet to get up. One thing's for sure though, Boatwright is a hell of a player, man, and I loved watching his journey. One of the best non-NBA players out there right now, and I'll bet my future Porsche 911 on it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.